is chairman of IPFC steering committee and mentor for Punjab state chapter PhD chamber. We also have with us our eminent speakers, Dr. Shweta Sam. She is uh, head IPR, Integram IP Mohali. And uh, Ms. Deepika Panikar, co-founder Logicon Pune. So I, to move, to initiate our event, I request Mr. RSS Deva, our chairman, to kindly deliver welcome address. Uh, Thank you, Ramneet, and uh, welcome all my uh, participants uh, on the today's program, uh, Role of Intellectual Property in Innovation Management Challenges. Um, though we are all managing everything on video conference, um, but uh, on this screen, we can see each other, which is a better way to sit in office and do the actually everything together. Uh, on behalf of PhD Chamber of Commerce and Industry and on my own behalf, uh, friends, I would like to extend a very warm welcome to all present here today. Uh, we have with us uh, Mr. Gaurav Sharma, who is technical expert of GIS, and uh, my colleague uh, from uh, Sangroor Zone Convener, uh, Mr. Gansham Kansalji. He is a part of our PhD chamber and also president of uh, Sangroo District uh, Industry uh, Association. And uh, we have eminent speakers uh, with us, uh, Ms. Deepika Divekar uh, Panik, co-founder of uh, Lovigon Pune, and Dr. Shweta Sen, head IPR, uh, Integram IP. Uh, my colleagues uh, from Chamber, uh, Madhu Ma'am, who is uh, heading uh, Regional Director of PhD Chamber of Commerce Chandigarh Office, and Ramneet, uh, heading Punjab uh, State Chapter of PhD from the Chamber side. We have uh, members from the SDIC Sangroor, members from Derabasi Industry Association, Mohali Industry Association, and MSME enrolled in GIS MSME Innovation Program. We are extremely grateful that this uh, initiative uh, of GIS and PhD will surely be helpful to all who are uh, being a part of this. Uh, I would like to, uh, you know, appraise about the PhD chamber, which is a 115-year uh, uh, organization, and it has a vast uh, experience and uh, services for the MSME and uh, at the grassroots level, with strong national and international linkages. And we are uh, now the Apex Chamber all over country. In PhD Startup Committee also, we have uh, organized many, you know, these webinars on the uh, this IP uh, intellectual property rights at different different places and now on the webinars. Uh, we are happy to announce that IP Facilitation Center at Amritsar, uh, which is a part of MSME Ministry. Uh, is going to be formally inaugurated now in this few days in Chandi, uh, by the Honorable Punjab Government uh, Minister. And uh, we will be having the trademarks, patents, copyright, design, and geographical indications, uh, which will be you know, getting registered here. Uh, all said and done, I believe today's program, uh, which will be uh, very well uh, you know, uh, by the speakers, the Subjects are uh, uh, the, the giving the how the trademarks are going to be registered, how are the innovations are to be going to be patent, and how can we improve the protection and enforcement uh, of IPR from uh, infringements. So, going further, I would request uh, uh, my participants here and uh, industry colleagues to be informative by attending maximum. Uh, information what all we can gain from here and let's hear the experts uh, Ramneet kindly carry on and yes, my best sir. wishes for that yeah thank you sir for your address now moving further I request Dr. Shweta San she is head IPR with Integram IP Mohali and she has rich experience in patent and trademark filing system strategies and patent laws she is doctorate in biotechnology and possess postgraduate diploma in intellectual property laws 
and she has earlier worked as patent scientist with corporate IP consultants Mohali. We look forward to hear your expert views, ma'am. And she'll be, uh, you know, giving overview of intellectual property laws. So, and I now request ma'am for her presentation. Thank you, ma'am. Good afternoon, everybody. Good. Uh, thank you for providing this opportunity. So I'll be sharing uh, my screen with you. Just a minute. Uh, is is screen visible? Yes, yes ma'am, we can see, yes. Okay, okay. Okay, so, so my topic today is intellectual property laws and overview to the, the laws. So what is intellectual property? I think everybody must be known, but just to start, what, what is intellectual property? Intellectual property, this refers to creation of minds or creation of the mind, such as inventions, literary, artistic work, design, symbols, anything which can be used for commerce is intellectual property. The creation of the mind is intellectual property, which is created with, from your intellect. That is intellectual property. Now, why intellectual property protection is so important? Why? Very first point, you can showcase your technology. Showcase means of this means you can present your idea you can discuss with everybody freely once you have protected your intellectual property whether it is a patent or design or anything you can uh, showcase your technology and it can be used as, as an asset when you are looking for funding it can be very critical factor in obtaining funds from investors it also block your competition it it increases your revenues by licensing to the inventor because inventor has put his hard work to develop a product so it gives the due recognition to the inventor and it stimulates innovation and economic growth so this is why the intellectual property was so important and with uh, when i'll be discussing in uh, detail the things will be more clear what are the types of intellectual property i think everybody knows Patents, trademarks, industrial designs, copyrights, geographical indications. We'll be discussing about these five today. So the very first is patents. What are the patents? Patents are exclusive rights granted for an invention. Any inventor, any applicant invents an invention, which, which can be a product or process that provides in general a new way of doing something. Or it can be a new technical solution to a problem. These patents are basically the give and take relationship between the government and the inventor. The government gives you monopoly rights for limited period of time, that is 20 years. And in turn, the government seeks the complete disclosure of your invention. So this is basically the give and take relationship between the government and the inventor. In, in these 20 years, nobody can manufacture, sell, uh, use your patented product without your prior permission. So this is how the patents give you per complete protection for the next 20 years. The next 20 years start from the very date of patent application. Say today you apply for the patent, your protection starts from the, your 20 years start from the today itself. What is the criteria of patentability? I don't, if, uh, if I have to say, okay, I have invented this thing, if it is patentable or not. So we uh, say it, 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 it is a threshold test, three tests. So I have put up this threshold. Uh, threshold test comes uh, is like uh, an invention to be patentable should fulfill these three criteria. That is threshold test, novelty, inventive step, and industrial application. What is novelty? It should not be known to public or anybody prior to the claim by the inventor. What is inventive step? 
what is uh, the invention should be not obvious to a person with the ordinary skill in art industrial application it must be uh, it must have some industrial application if it is Uh, it, it if it, it if any invention any product any process doesn't have any industrial application it is not patentable so it must be novel not known to anybody it must have some technological advancement over the existing process or product excuse me Plus, excuse me yes uh your voice is not audible to us okay uh Uh, just because it is cracking uh okay uh ma'am but you are audible to us we can hear you maybe there is some problem at his end okay or you can continue ma'am okay so uh, industrial application as i have given here three gates it must be uh, it must have utility novelty and it must be non obvious so your invention should pass through these three gates to be patentable to summarize what is patentable any new product process method or manufacture manner of manufacture is patentable any machine any novel machine not existing any novel machine apparatus or other articles are patentable substances produced by these manufacturing the products of these manufacturing are patentable which has technical application to industry or is used with special hardware is patentable not simple software as such is not patentable it comes as uh, under copyright material but software in when used with a special hardware it becomes patentable product uh, patent for food chemical medicines or drugs is patentable improvements to any of the above listed as patentable now what is not patentable any purel purely mental process concept of mind say uh, how to play chess or how to win a, a game is not uh, patentable any mathematical algorithm or formula is not patentable arrangements of printed material is not patentable it comes under copyright copyright naturally occurring things say gravity or the sun rises from the east or something like that is not discovery of existing things is not patentable scientific principles or older concepts or older practices like traditional knowledge uh, is not patentable we use uh, turmeric in common practices for healing purposes it is not patentable inventions solely used useful in making atomic weapons destructive inventions not patentable inventions harmful to natural occurrence of human plant animal is not patentable say uh, one says i have invented a machine used for very useful in gambling is not patentable a machine to break in a house is not patentable a machine used to torture a animal is not patentable so the inventions harmful to natural occurrence of human plant animal are not patentable given to these things okay what is patentable not patentable one thing arrive one th one question arises in everybody mind how are patents relevant to my business so i have put up this while it is certainly true that not uh, not every enterprise develop develop patentable inventions it is a wrong it is wrong to believe that patents only apply to complex physical or chemical processes and products or that they are only useful to large corporations patents can be obtained for any area of technology from paper clip to computers uh, you must be knowing that the paper clip which we use uh, in day to day life is a patented product we use computers it is a patented product we use nylon ropes it 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 was patented patented once uh, it was a few years ago many things day to day safety pins we use we use lead pencil these all were patented so these are simple small inventions but these were these are patented products so uh, the for patents it uh, 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 we do not need any technological breakthroughs simple inventions can also be patented why should i consider patenting my inventions 
next question arises in our mind first thing it gives you exclusive right to prevent or stop others from commercially exploiting your invention for next 20 years which we have discussed earlier second is it gives you return on investments having invested a considerable amount of money and time in developing innovative products you will be able to establish in the market as the preeminent player if you apply for the patents and you will be able to obtain higher returns on the investments third point opportunity to license or sell the inventions if you don't want to exploit the patent yourself you can sell it or you can license your license the commercial commercialization of the patented invention to the another enterprise which could then be a source of income for your company fourth point it gives you increase it gives it increases your negotiating power if your company is in process of acquiring the rights to use the patents of the another enterprise through a licensing contract your patent portfolio will enhance your bargaining power say you want to take you want to buy patent uh, or license the patent from the another company and you have uh, patents for your uh, patents with uh, patents uh, you also so you can negotiate you can cross license okay take my patent for this amount and i will take um, a patent for this amount so this can negotiation uh, can be done in a very good manner and you will be you can have the upper hand so the positive image of your enterprise so the this will the patenting patents will give the positive image to your enterprise business partners investors shareholders may normally perceive patent portfolios as demonstration of the high level of expertise specialized specialization and technological capacities within your company so this gives you a positive image to your company your enterprise so this is why the patents are good for your company what happens if you don't patent your inventions okay all, all said and done what will happen if i don't patent my inventions if you don't patent your invention competitors will take advantage of it this is we all know then what will happen if your product is successful it is well executed in the market well accepted in the market many other competitor firms will be tempted to make the same product by using your invention and they need not to ask you because you don't have any exclusive right over that invention large enterprise enterprises may take advantage of economies of scale to product, produce the product more cheaply and compete at a more favorable market price and they do and this will considerably reduce your company's market share also your the small competing enterprises may be able to produce the same product sell it at a lower price process than you can offer to the market as they don't have to because they have not uh, spent any money on the original research and development of that particular product so this will happen if you don't patent your inventions so everybody will be uh, 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 will be selling your product without your permission and you will be gaining nothing is a patent valid in every country no the patent is not valid in every country patent uh, are ter territorial rights this means if you file a patent in india your patent is valid only in india if you want to file if you uh, if uh, you have you want exclusive rights in us you have to file the patent in us also in japan in every country you want exclusive rights for your invention so this is the patents what are the common fit pitfalls we normally see if we discuss our invention with an anybody say as i have quoted if the inventor allows other people to know about the invention before a patent application is filed the inventor may lose his or her patent rights so never disclose the invention without an executed non disclosure agreement this is general rule no public disclosure until a patent application is filed so these are the common pit pitfalls we normally see so this was about the patents second is trademarks 
what is a trademark trademark is a sign capable of distinguishing the goods or services of one enterprise from the goods of other enterprises so we normally say see mcdonalds starbucks logo so these are the trademarks of these companies and they can very well discriminate distinguish the goods or services they provide from the another enterprises like nike adidas all our clothing all all deal with the clothing but we can distinguish their uh, enterprises the period of registration for trademarks is for 10 years but can be renewed indefinitely uh, every 10 years you can renew your trademarks trademark can be a sign word letter drawing picture emblem shape graphic representation packaging or any combination of the above there can be some unconventional trademarks also which can be smell of the product like that shape of the product like coca cola bottle has the shape the glass bottle has the trademark of its shape so that is an unconventional trademark but that that is possible this is for an example that coca cola these are all well known trademarks which we can very well see ki these yes this google is uh, what this google is about samsung mastercard apple yahoo nikon kodak there are many trademarks which uh, we come across day in our day to day life so these trademarks we know that this company deals with with Hello. this thing and the sir the next is industrial design what is industrial design an industrial design constitutes the ornamental aspect of an article it is different from the trademark it is different from the technical patent it is a industrial design which increases the aesthetic value which which uh, uh, only uh, uh, concentrates on the aesthetic value of an article of a thing an industrial design may consist of three dimensional features such such as the shape of an article or two dimensions just patterns lines or colors what kind of product does industrial design right rights offer in principle the owner of a registered industrial design or of a design patent has the right to prevent third parties same as the technical patent third parties from making selling or reporting articles bearing or embodying a design which is a copy or substantially a copy of the protected design when such acts are undertaken for commercial purpose so this also prevents all others from copying uh, the design so things will be clear few examples i have taken the examples from day to day life we say the uh, iron wallet brush the shape of brush oral b colgate every uh, uh, shapes of this brush are protected by industrial design pen we use in day to day life renolds uh, parker all these pen shapes has been protected by industrial design bottles scissors everything has been protected from uh, with the industrial design so nobody can copy their design so these are few examples of uh, textile and uh, jewelry the printing on our uh, the the clothes we wear are protected by industrial design jewelry we are uh, we are is protected by the shape the cut of the diamond is protected by the industrial design we can see the examples here there are many examples all set all designs of jewelry are there and all are different and, and are protected by the industrial design plus the textile now what is not registrable under industrial designs same, same which is not new or original which is already disclosed to the public which is not significantly distinguishable distinguishable from already known designs which comprises or contains scandalous or obscene matter and which is contrary to public order or morality is not registrable under industrial design act next is copyright now what is copyright copyright or we normally say authors right is a 
copyright is is the rights that creators have over their literary artistic work it can be over their uh, books music paintings sculptures films broadcast computer programs databases maps advertisements and technical drawings so all these covered uh, are covered under the copyright act copyrights what should uh, what come what what is copyrightable original literary dramatic musical and artistic work this work has to be in the material form it for ideas ideas only ideas and facts are not copyrightable so literary means books you have to put your idea into the books you have to write a story you have uh, you write book it it becomes copyrightable material if it is only the idea it is not the copyrightable material cinematograph films and sound recordings are also the copyrightable material who is the owner of the copyright for literary the author who writes the book drama for drama the dramatist music the composer artistic work the artist it can be painter sculptor architect for photograph it is photographer for author of computer program the person who has created it cinematograph film the producer the sound recording the producer but there are some exceptions to, exceptions to the ownerships in the course of employment if some employee has developed a copyright it it is the right of the employer say uh, if i am presenting this uh, uh, presentation today and this is by uh, this is uh, by phd chamber of commerce so it is the right to this copy this presentation goes to copyright of of this presentation goes to the phd chamber of commerce and it will be not mine because i am acting as a i am a employed person to the phd chamber of commerce for today so this is this is this is the right a copyright of the phd chamber of commerce this particular presentation so employment by newspaper magazine employer has publishing right other rights with author photograph painting cinema or valuable consideration the ownership rights goes to the person who pays the money duration of literary duration for literary uh, oh, oh. duration for literary dramatic musical and artistic work published during lifetime of author is life of lifetime of the author plus 60 years of after his death so this is the duration of the copyright next is geographical indication we all uh, hear about geographical indication we say we say the shawls are good from the kullu the tea is good from the kangra uh, uh, the oranges are good from the nagpur and uh, the uh, uh, jutti is good from the patiala so these all are of uh, define the speciality of that particular origin so what is a geographical indication and how it comes under the intellectual property right geographical indication is a sign used on products that have a specific geographical origin and possesses qualities or reputation that are due to that origin in addition the qualities characteristics or reputation of the product should be essentially due to the place of origin like we say the tea is good from the kangra or tea is good from the darjeeling so why only the darjeeling tea is good in taste because it is due to that environment that place that weather that soil which makes the darjeeling tea special so this is due to the place of origin if you grow that darjeeling plant a tree plants in mohali or somewhere in punjab maybe it will not give that particular aroma so that particular aroma is due to that particular place known as darjeeling so this is geographical indication this comes at geographical indication and there must be a clear link between the product and its original place of production and the things will be clear when i will cite the example these were the some geographical indications which were granted by indian patent office in 2017 and 18 darjeeling tea tirupati laddu tuls tula panji rice of west bengal mangoes from andhra pradesh kashmiri pashmina so all these kangra paintings nagpur orange 
So all is uh, given uh, the geographical indication by granted. Uh, these were granted as geographical indication by Indian Patent Office in 2017 and 18. And uh, recently, the Kashmiri saffron, mm -hmm. Kashmiri kesar, has been given this tag. Now, to summarize, the multi-billion dollar film industry, which we uh, which entertains us daily, would not exist without this copyright protection, without the rewards uh, provided by the patent systems. Just no inventors would have little incentive to continue producing better and more efficient products for consumers, and this this is provided by the patents and consumers would have no means to buy products or services with the, without reliable international trademark protection and enforcement mechanisms to discourage counterfeiting and piracy so this is how the copyright patents trademarks and general indications uh, geographical in indications help us in day to day life so that is why this in, uh, intellectual property rights are very very important so thank you thank you ma'am for very elaborative uh, presentation and you have very uh, you have explained very nicely with examples thank you so moving forward now i welcome deepika ma'am from uh, logicon pune deepika ma'am she is a commercial law and contracts consultant with extensive experience of over 10 years in this field. She has worked with the Serum Institute of India as the contracts counsel and has over the years rendered complete commercial law and contract services to a wide range of organizations, ranging from funded startups to MSMEs and well-established companies. So now I request Dipika ma'am for his presentation. She will be making presentation on the role of IP in innovation management, and she will be covering the challenges and prospects as well. So, over to you, ma'am. Thank you so much, Ramniji. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, this is the second session that uh, I'm conducting with the PhD Chamber of Commerce, uh, particularly with your uh, branch of the chamber. And uh, it's always joy to be here. Uh, so. Ms. Sen has, Dr. Sen has spoken uh, very effectively about the types of IP uh, that there are. And I don't think I need to elaborate anything uh, more on the types of IP. I'd uh, just immediately start share, uh, sharing my screen and take you to uh, the presentation. All right, so um, basically when we talk about uh, IP or intellectual uh, property, uh, there is, of course, now there is an increased uh, awareness and uh, an increased importance of this uh, entire concept or uh, of the entire domain of intellectual property rights. But that has come about, uh, I would say, uh, very forcefully in the last uh, about 10 years or so, 10 to 15 years. Uh, very often, people forget about it. Organizations, entities, even inventors themselves, they tend to forget about the kind of value and the kind of merit that intellectual property rights uh, pack and the kind of value it can bring to their organizations. So um, it is important for us to understand what are IPRs as well as understand what sort of value they can bring to our organization in terms of revenue, in terms of uh, monetization and commercialization of the IP. And what are certain pitfalls to be avoided so that our own creativity or our own creation does not get hijacked and uh, does not lose the reason for which it was uh, created. So uh, Dr. Sen has effectively already covered what are IPRs and what are the various types of uh, IP rights that uh, exist. The only thing about IPRs that I often feel uh, we tend to you know, give a second place to is the fact that uh, intellectual property rights are not, they are not visible to the naked eye. 
So if I want to buy an office, if I want to uh, invest, if I want to make some capital uh, expenditure in machinery or in an assembly line, it is very easy for me to purchase that property or to deal in that property because I can see it right there in front of my eyes. Um, unlike that, IP rights or intellectual property is intangible. So uh, it is something that is, like uh, Dr. Sell has said, it is something that is created uh, from your intellect or from the resources of your mind. So, and hence it tends to be lost or tends to lose its importance uh, in commercial transactions. This is something that uh, we must certainly avoid. And uh, we must understand that though IP is not uh, tangible or physically we cannot uh, see it or cannot uh, actually understand by touching, feeling how it works, it's a very big asset to uh, the creator or the company which has uh, created it. And it deserves its own importance and it deserves a lot of attention in your entire management of that particular organization or uh, of that particular company. So very important to understand that. Now uh, we've been speaking about IPRs and you've seen the kind of uh, IPRs that there are. Uh, a very important question that uh, I think comes to our mind is, do I need to have an important, uh, do I need to have an understanding, a basic understanding of uh, intellectual property rights? I would like to believe every person who is a part of the commercial world today must understand certain important aspects of uh, intellectual property rights. You do have uh, professionals, uh, IP agents, advocates, lawyers in place who will help you form a strategy, who will help you protect your intellectual property rights. But the very fact that something special, something innovative has been created and it has its own value is something that each person who is a part of the commercial world uh, needs to be aware of. So we often say every owner, shareholder, investor who is associated with a company needs to have a basic understanding of IPRs. Creators, many a times people create wonderful music, they write really good pieces. Unfortunately, they realize sometime later that and it has been uh, replicated and I'm not even getting credit for it. That is a very bad feeling to have. So everybody who is an inventor or who's a creator, who's an author, that person also must be uh, aware of intellectual property and intellectual property rights. Uh, another category is key managerial personnel. So uh, our clients often ask us that, uh, you know, people are just signing on NDAs, which are non-disclosure agreements. Uh, people are just agreeing to uh, certain things, our key managerial personnel, important people in our organization, without understanding what access or what um, in, in way or entry into the intellectual property rights they are giving to the other party. So it's important that important people, key managerial personnel of an organization understands uh, basics of IPR, naturally technical officers, because they need to understand what is it that we are creating, whatever we are creating, inventing or perfecting, does it have a uh, commercial value in terms of IPR? So naturally they need to be uh, aware of it. And when we say financial and other advisors and consultants, the reason why they need to know is these consultants and advisors are involved in the journey of a company or of a startup, particularly when it comes to fundraising or uh, go to market, going to market with a particular product. They need to know what is the patentability of, for example, of a patent or whether this particular uh, industrial design can get protection. So they need to understand um, different intellectual property rights as well so that they can then advise uh, their companies or the people that they are pro uh, providing services to. So uh, that is again, this particularly is a, a list of people who need to have a basic understanding at the very least of IPRs. Uh, now, 
when dr sen told us uh, about the various uh, types of ipr i'm sure it must have rung a bell or uh, i'm sure each of uh, our participants today must have probably wondered uh, mera to ye naya product hai or i'm launching a new line or uh, i am launching a new company abhi uska uh, name and logo wo sab plan karna hai so each of us who is creating who each of you all especially who are the pioneers of industry all of you are people who are actually uh, innovating each and every day of your lives and hence each time a new product or a, a new technology is created uh, it immediately should ring a bell in our minds that this is my invention or this is a new creation and now now that i have created it or i am in the process of creating it i need to protect it and it's important to get that right to understand that every product uh, or technology that you may be working with need not necessarily be something that you can protect but if you have something new it is important to understand that right at the very beginning get into a mode of trying to protect it and how can you protect it very simple by filing for a patent by registering a trademark so it's important to get that right in the process of creating and uh, you know coming up with new things we shouldn't lose the uh, legalities or lose the aspect of protecting what we are creating uh, very often organizations some of our clients uh, they come to us and they say abhi ye naya uh, especially the more dynamic companies they come to us and say uh, ye naya product launch ho raha hai naya app launch ho raha hai this is uh, one of a kind service that we are providing especially in the lockdown period so many industries so many businesses have pivoted they have actually changed a bit and gotten so much done online and uh, really innovated to a level where they could have gone down they could have sunk but because of their innovation they have come out of it and are doing wonders for themselves now so uh, this is the time when a lot of innovation is happening but this is also a time when a lot of uh, challenges are coming in front of organizations when it comes to ip protection or when it comes to understanding what is the right strategy to have with respect to your ip so uh, the most basic challenge is how to protect it if you have created something and uh, let's say a consultant was uh, involved in designing let's say there is a unique uh, product unique uh, engineering device that your organization has created and a third party consultant was involved only in some technical evaluation i'm just giving you an example a situation that actually one of our clients have uh, recently faced Uh, a client a third party client was involved in the technical uh, e evaluation that uh, consultant stayed with the company for about 6 months understood the workings of the entire uh, engineering device moved out there was nothing no a watertight agreement in place likewise the uh, company was had not yet even filed for patent because they were in the process of creating something meanwhile this gentleman just took his knowledge took whatever trade secret secrets that the company had shared with him to a competitor created a product uh, the competitor was bigger so they had more finances uh, to create something uh, similar and immediately uh, filed for patent uh, now can you imagine the kind of frustration that this smaller entity would have because they were the ones who, who would have been the first ones to uh, approach the market and they would have been they would have had the first advantage first to move advantage unfortunately there was no ip strategy formulated at the right point as soon as their uh, products came to the level of attaining patents or rather becoming patentable their action was not taken at the right point too much time was lost and hence they came to a point where their idea with just minor changes was uh, copied by somebody else of course there are ways and means to take care of this as well and people do then get into litigation courts etc but 
to protect to file for ip protection at the right point is very important and if you miss that then it can become a big challenge in uh, proving that you are the one who has created this that you are the first inventor or first creator of this intellectual property uniqueness prove karna bahut mushkil ho jata hai uh, in cases where uh, you know you don't have documentation to prove it or you don't have uh, the thappa of a certificate so it is very important to uh, understand what time to move in for protection another very important uh, thing to consider or rather a challenge that comes before uh, inventors and organizations is just the example that i gave you a third party consultant came worked with them saw whatever was going on went outside and just disclosed it to a competitor this could have easily been uh, taken care of or addressed had there been a watertight contract in place or a watertight agreement in place to bind the consultant to certain confidentiality secrecy so on and so forth so it's very important to have the right kind of contracts and agreements in place in order to make sure that your intellectual property is not just uh, taken and it is not discussed all over the marketplace so that when you go to the market people say ye to hame pata hai ye to humne naye uh, advances and technology mein dekh rakhe hain especially in the age of social media with everything being put on youtube facebook people shooting videos as they are creating something especially in these times it is very important to understand to have the right agreements and contracts in place so that you give access only within the limits of that contract that agreement tells the other party bhai if you are filming it because we want to uh, create we want to uh, you know have an advertisement shot you your your involvement is only to that extent you cannot then uh, show that advertisement even before we have launched the product to 10 places and all of these points are easily uh, addressed in your agreements or contracts so that again becomes very important uh, another thing people often lose the track of is good documentation and by documentation i don't mean the agreements part that comes in later but even as creation is happening innovation is happening it is very important to have documents uh, writings diaries whatever it is in place which proves that this was developed by you because like we said um, you know somebody else can easily uh, come and copy your ip if it is not protected likewise nobody should be able to accuse you as an organization or as a creator of the fact that you have copied it from somebody else it is both ways protection of yours and also the fact that nobody should accuse you of just piracy or uh, you know hijacking so that is why it is very important to maintain sound documentation of your innovation as it is happening and especially uh, becomes very important in bigger organizations because there are larger departments working on it if 10 people are involved in one particular a uh, new device that is coming up or a new design that uh, the company is being launched out of that if only three maintain good documentation and the other seven just do things in a very random ad hoc manner then it becomes difficult to prove your uh, title or the fact that you were the first ones so that is why correct documentation uh, of your ip creation process is very important now uh, we have been talking so much uh, about intellectual uh, property rights and what it brings to uh, organizations so it is very important to go into details of that exactly what i said what it brings to the organization or why is why does it assume importance uh, dr sen has already covered most of this so i'm not going to go too much uh, into detail however increase in business valuation is i think one of the most uh, important aspects or one of the most important boons that ip or intellectual property rights uh, give to organizations so, uh, this is the age of innovation i mean after especially in the last uh, few years 
each day there is an advancement and each day you get something which is better than what you had the previous day so the minute you have something which is different or which is an improvement over whatever there is going around in the market all eyes turn to you as a business as an organization and hence this is how uh, ip or innovation increases your value or valuation as a business so in today's day of things coming up new each day ip is the best asset to have even i would say even more precious than physical assets and uh, more crucial to your increasing business valuation another very important thing is uh, first to market advantage so uh, how often do we say we don't say photocopy karke leke aaiye hum bolte hai isko xerox karke leke aaiye please xerox is nothing but the name of the company which makes photocopier machines but it has become such a it is the first thing that we think of when we think koi bhi cheez photocopy karni hai so first to market advantage is very crucial another example is amazon when we want to order something online that's the first app that we open there are hundreds others but invariably that's the first one that we open so first to market advantage is very important another uh, aspect of intellectual property rights and this is very important for uh, more established businesses not so much for startups but for the more established businesses uh not always we have the time or the resources to have a big research and development department i mean yes some companies have it and some decide that we cannot do all of this in house instead there are so many organizations and entities who come up with new with innovation every day so when you have the uh, financial resources you can just go ahead and purchase that it or rather take i mean there are different terms we'll come to that later but purchasing of ip helps you save a lot of time and uh, physical resources that are involved in uh, r and d research and development and your own creation so especially for larger companies it becomes uh, important uh, and rather it is a very helpful tool to have so if a startup has created something and uh, you realize that there is a lot of potential or a lot of commercial value in it with the right kind of valuation you can buy out that ip you can take the services of the people who are involved in that creation so an interesting uh, deal that we structured some time back was this company uh, wanted to get involved in uh, this was a bigger company a bigger software company another company had come up with a, a with a dip, or rather with an improvement over the facility or over the services that they were providing so this company instead of wasting time and energy again in reinventing the wheel just decided to invest in the other company take on their ip also take on the creators of that uh, particular ip and that was a win win for everybody for the startup and for the bigger company as well so uh, again a very important thing and uh, last but not the least i think i already covered it your ip your intellectual property is your brand identity so we know restaurants by name we know uh, every these days in the day of branding and uh, social media and it, it's all in your name right so an ip is uh, any intellectual property immediately gets linked to your brand and assumes a lot of importance uh now certain challenges or certain pitfalls or uh, things that we need to be aware of while dealing with our ip is what i'm going to address in this slide the first is ip infringement very crucial because like i said the minute you have created something which is innovative or which is uh, different we want to protect it and we want to reserve all the rights in that particular creation to ourselves it is very unfortunate and very bad for the business if any third party just comes copies either with uh, i mean because you don't have uh, registered ip or because even if you have registered ip they are not bothered uh, so ip infringement which means copying of your or innovation 
and using it in their name that is a big pitfall and that is something that we need to be very careful of plus this can easily be addressed by like dr senna said uh, patenting filing for uh, geographical indications and so on and so forth so uh, it is important to be to guard ourselves against ip against ip infringement uh, another like i have already addressed improper record keeping so i'm not going to uh, touch too much upon that but two very important uh, aspects are ip non exploitation and ip undervaluation when we say undervaluation that is not realizing the market value or under or overvaluation let me put it both ways not realizing the exact market value of what has been created and hence not understanding if you want to license it you do you are not being able to do it because the price that you are saying is too high and nobody is interested in uh, get, getting into a licensing deal with you or what you have created you are not you don't really value it enough and hence it is not giving you enough revenue so undervaluation or overvaluation both of it becomes a big challenge but the most unfortunate uh, type of challenge which can easily be avoided is non exploitation not exploiting commercially your own ip so if you have created something it needs to go out in the market and it needs to become a revenue generating stream for you and not doing that or not entering into uh, deals or not adopting a strategy vis-a-vis -vis your organization which helps you exploit your ip is a very big uh, pitfall we have seen this happen a lot in uh, you know startups which start with big dreams in their eyes and then uh, they actually realize that they want to talk to 20 people but there are no resources so while they have come up with something very good they are not able to follow through on it and this non exploitation can actually be the death of innovation so uh, something that we need to guard against always uh now when we talk about uh, the way forward or rather now that you have your intellectual property rights how can you make the most of it so just having it is not good enough it needs to fetch you some uh, revenue and some returns right and that brings us to the point of understanding what could be the prospective modes of uh, exploiting your ip or using your ip the most common one is sale of ip in this uh, language it is called ip assignment wherein uh, an inventor and this is often times a smaller entity either an individual or a startup which has created something a bigger entity gets interested and wants to buy out that particular intellectual property created so uh, then a transaction takes place uh, there is an elaborate assignment agreement uh, that is uh, drawn up and that ip is sold or assigned from the creator to the bigger party or to the other party it is very important to have a sound assignment agreement in place because this becomes the basis of royalty this becomes the basis by which month on month uh, the creator is going to fetch money or earn money from that creation so assignment agreement also uh, involves terms re regarding royalty licensing etc so very important to have a correct draft and have a correct strategy when it comes to uh, assignment licensing uh, is another way in of uh, ip exploitation or commercialization it is a very common way people mostly prefer to do licensing instead of complete sale or assignment now in licensing there are again various types uh, exclusive non exclusive what happens is the owner or the uh, person in whose name the ip is registered continues to hold the rights in that pa particular innovation or in that particular patent or as the case may be copyright but allows only gives the license to another party to use it commercially either manufacture something or uh, use that particular name in their own uh, creation or something like that so basically this is not a complete transfer this is only a permit which is given or a license which is given to use that particular ip 
again comes at a month on month licensing fee or royalty whatever and it can be an excellent revenue generator because a license can be non exclusive you can give license to two three entities also of course it will depend on the exact nature of your uh, transaction but uh, licensing is a much more um, a better way of staying engaged in your uh, intellectual property process and still uh, sort of earn revenue from it uh, month on month i've already spoken about complete buyouts of uh, so technology transfer basically means that some technology which may or may not be either patentable but which is unique or innovative has been um, created by a smaller entity and it is being transferred to another entity in various forms so you have technology transfer agreements wherein people get involved in terms of equity purchase so they come in they buy 20% stake in the company and then the technology gets transferred to their to them so on and so forth joint ventures and mergers uh, and acquisitions again are a very common uh, way when both parties are uh, big are uh, people who have equal things to contribute and um, i think i can see uh, mr prithvi raj has uh, raised his hand but i'm just going to finish uh, talking about this and then probably uh, we can answer that question if there yeah, queries ma'am we can take uh, after the after, after presentation type. sorry ramnin ji i lost you yeah that's fine i said queries we can take after your presentation is over then sure. we'll open house for discussion right sure sure all right so uh, another way like i was saying is uh, joint venture agreements and mergers and uh, acquisitions two entities each having something unique each having something different realizing that together what they can offer to the market is far better than what each of them can offer individually the two innovations will really put them ahead of their competitors and hence coming together and uh, either getting into joint ventures or mergers and acquisitions so on and so forth um now like i have already spoken about ip protection and why it is important it is important to uh, approach ip protection from a very planned and strategic manner and not just do it in a haphazard manner we have discussed so many ways in which ip can fetch you money or revenue and hence ip protection and ip commercialization should get a lot of importance you should sit with your lawyers your consultants whoever the right people you think are and map out a strategy to protect the intellectual property that belongs to you um register ip rights it's very important registration gives you evidence so if somebody challenges in the court of law and says nahi ye to hum 20 saal se use kar rahe hain if you have registration you have evidence to say no i have been using it from 25 years for example so registration of ip is a very important thing uh then we talk about due diligence of uh, ip rights this is again more relevant to companies who are uh, purchasing ip or who are getting it assigned or who are doing a licensing deal they need to do enough due diligence and make sure that the the thing that they are buying actually is worthy of being bought and worthy of the price that they are going to uh, you know be paying for it so we need to understand we need to do a thorough check of the agreements of the uh, process documentation and make sure that the ip rights that they are buying they are registered they are legitimate people who are licensing it do have a right to license them there is no litigation pending so on and so forth uh, i've already spoken enough about uh, strategies and policies so i'm not going to talk much about that agreements related to ip uh, like the ones i already sort of touched upon when i spoke about licensing and assignment are something that also need to be paid enough attention to because this is the way you will ensure that misuse or misappropriation of that intellectual property uh, does not happen uh, i'm just going to quickly uh, i've already spoken about modes of commercialization i'm not going to uh, go too much in detail uh, 
I've spoken about IP sale and licensing, etc. Uh, now, apart from sale agreements, assignment agreements, and JVs and mergers, there are certain other ways or other documents wherein your IP can be protected. While licensing and uh, assignments give you the opportunity to exploit it or commercially make revenue from it, these agreements or certain IP clauses in your other agreements ensure that there is no um, no infringement happening, that nobody is um, taking away or fiddling with what belongs to you. The most important one is non-disclosure agreements. The minute you have a unique creation or an innovation, whenever you are talking to somebody about the unique aspects of that innovation or creation, please make sure that before disclosing any information like that, you have a non-disclosure agreement in place. In fact, it is a it is a thing that I literally almost had to initially force on my clients that aapka kuch innovation hai, without non-disclosure, aap kisi ko quotation bhi nahi bhejenge, for example. And now it has become such a habit with many of our uh, clients in the manufacturing domain and in the R&D domain that if they don't send NDAs, they come back and tell us, isko bhejna reh gaya hai, ma'am, I'm going to send it out today itself before I even send them a quotation. So please make sure that your non-disclosure agreements are in place. Uh, IP clauses or rather how are you going to manage your intellectual property within an organization uh, should also be a part of founders or co-founders agreements. If one person is the technical head or CTO and the other one is CFO, CTO is the one who has the technical bent of mind and he's the one or she's the one who has created that particular intellectual property right. But ultimately it should belong to the company because that is the CTO's contribution to the company. So your co-founders agreement or your director's agreements become very important. Um, and you need to have a good IP clause in those agreements. Likewise in your joint ventures, mergers and acquisition agreements also. If you are a, an investor or if you propose to become a shareholder of a company, it is very important to understand that us company ka IP kaisa hai, uska due diligence karke, apne shareholders agreement mein usko enough importance dena. There, to factor in enough clauses in the agreement, in the shareholders agreement, so that the company, the small startup or, you know, the whoever the investee company is, remains involved in innovation creation. So that it is very important to pay attention to IP clauses there. As a rule, if you have something which is unique, different, and which is an intellectual property, please make sure that you have appropriate intellectual property rights clauses in the documentation like distributorship agreement, channel partner agreement, agency agreement, because these are the people who have open access to your information, to your confidential information, to your intellectual property rights. So uh, you need to bind them so that they don't go and cause an infringement or disclose it to others who can then copy you or infringe your IP. So it is important to have correct clauses in uh, commercial agreements like distributorship, uh, channel partner, etc. And that is why we always say a good draft matters. So it is important to focus on a correct draft of the IP agreements. Likewise, please make sure that all your IP contracts are reviewed and uh, assessed from time to time in order to ensure that there are no uh, lacuna. Uh, disputes, IP disputes are something that can become a big pitfall because one single stay order or an injunction from a court which stops you from manufacturing can, and it has happened in the past, it can be a downfall or it can be really a very tricky situation for a company to navigate. So if your paperwork is in place, if your IP is protected, it becomes easier to protect yourself from any IP dispute. And hence, it is important to have the right uh, setup and right strategy, which helps you reduce or eliminate your uh, liability. Um, that is pretty much all that uh, I have to, I had to share with you all on the topic of 
challenges and the way ahead more importantly the way ahead in uh, commercialization and exploitation of intellectual property rights and uh, i think uh, rimni ji i'm happy to take any questions uh, if they are i think i might have overshot my time also no no that's so, fine ma'am thank you so much for your very comprehensive and detailed presentation you covered every aspect right from strategies for protecting ip to you know what are the challenges related to ip and also the prospective uses of ip so now we open house for discussion if there if there are any queries uh, participants they can show a raise of hand so we will be taking the queries one by one and ma'am there are also some uh, queries in the chat box yes i'll take a look at those yeah yeah bilkul so shweta ma'am uh, which i'm just think... going to stop screen share yeah yeah ma'am you can so whatever is relevant to shweta ma'am she can answer that and uh, what is in your domain you can answer those queries yeah there is one uh, query from mr tushar tiwari yeah i think it would be uh, more relevant to dr shweta he is asking uh, for uh, please suggest solutions for discouraging such activities small changes in design that are made and people copy and they evade patent regimes yes uh, mr tushar design patents uh, are not very uh, like very strict patents even a small change is considered a change in the main uh, article and it can be uh, it is considered as novel say there are so many uh, design patents for toothbrush there are small changes in the bristles small changes in the handle and they can be uh, they are given this industrial design so for this design patent there is not so much uh, like uh, you cannot protect this uh, design so much but for technical patents <clears throat> there are claims are there we give the broader claims so we can protect many things for design patents it's not possible it's a uh, very we also we also have query from uh, mr bs anand so you you would like to say something yeah uh, ma'am uh, there is uh, variation in consultancy fees with the different consultants so how to find a good consultant for these things so we are already here <laughs> we are offering you know the ip registrations at a very nominal price which are very uh, you know lesser than the market price and the center is uh, under minister of msme so we are offering uh, ip registrations at a quite a lesser price in the market so uh, just taking forward from what uh, rimni ji said typically i think the best consultant to work with would be somebody who understands your fee budget understands the value or the uh, commercial value and also understands the limitation especially if it is a smaller or a more emerging organization who understands that at a point you know money can't be the only factor so you can always there are ways to defer payments to have installmentized payments and so on and so forth but also somebody who understands the value of your ip and who helps you protect it and commercialize it in the correct manner instead of just doing some slap dash work ki bhai karke de do waise bhi inse kahan hi itna charges uh, mil rahe hain just do it and finish it off so i think the right consultant would not care so much about that because the money would come in eventually but make sure that your ip stays protected and commercialized what what uh, 10 11 years back na uh, we went for this ips so we spent some money all that was gone wasted mm -hmm. again recently when we required uh, we again hired somebody else and then paid the again the time was wasted okay right uh, ramneet we will consult you next time when we uh -huh, require sure, the services sir. 
Thank you. So Thank we'll you. keep in mind uh, the, each and every requirement of your product, and uh, we'll and you're offering you know services as per the needs of the client. Also, you know, factoring in the money part because even that is uh, very important for uh, every business, and they also compare you know what are the rates in the market and how we are supporting them. All right, right. Thank you. Yeah, any other query? You can show a raise of hand. So if there are no queries, then uh, I would request Mr. MP Sharma. He is the finance secretary of Sangroor District Industrial Chamber for his vote of thanks. Mr. MP Sharma, as Mr. MP Singh. Thank you, madam. Hello, Hanji sir. First of all, I want to thank the PSG Chamber for the PSG Chamber that today they have sponsored us for this such a big event. I have given us a great opportunity. I have also given us a great opportunity to thank Dr. Shweta Sain and Deepika Ji. Sir, we lost your uh, voice. Sir, we cannot hear you, Mohinda, sir. I can understand that we have a seminar today. We have a lot of coffee knowledge and we have a lot of coffee knowledge. We have a lot of coffee knowledge. In case they need any solution to IP rights, they will contact you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for your uh, remarks. And... Uh, We'll keep, you know, uh, associating with you for our future events as well. So, still we can, you know, take any query if there is, if anyone wants to ask anything, we are still open. I think, ma'am, there is no query. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So thank you, Dr. Shweta Sen and uh, Ms. Deepika Panikar, ma'am. Thank you so much for your time and, you know, for explaining us this IP concept so well. And we are really thankful to you for your presence. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you all participants for your time and for joining this session. Thank you. Thank you, Rimnitri. Okay, bye. I'm closing bye the bye session. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye.